guys. It's Lane, the project guy. Welcome back. We're back on the Northern 484 live steam locomotive. Today, we're going to concentrate on making the rings for the pistons that are contained in the cylinders. There's two pistons, and each one has two rings. So we're going to need four rings total. And this is a project that I've been a little nervous about for the entire time I've been working on this locomotive. There are several ways to make these rings. Some very simple, and it goes right up the uh, complexity level to pretty complex. And, and I've arrived at a method that I think is appropriate for what I plan to do with this locomotive and appropriate for the amount of time versus the efficiency level that I'm going to um, get out of these rings once I invest time in making them. All right, we start off with a diamond tool and an unsupported bar of cast iron. I think the brand of this is Dura Bar. I bought it on eBay. The finish wasn't good. The diamond tool left me a real coarse finish. So I decided I would face off this piece of Dura Bar and put a live center in it. You can see there was already previously a live center on uh, the on this piece of stock. That was from a, a previous project I I did with this stock so I'm gonna to have to solve that situation in a minute but right now let's just face it off I'll show showing the viewers kind of process of doing this if you're new to machining uh, you might be interested in seeing but you have to lock down the carriage when you face it off and uh, engage the automatic feed and you can see that live center is bouncing around the, the dimple for it. I was kind of thinking, how am I going to solve this? And what I decided to do was to use an end mill and plunge it in and get me a fresh start. And I guess I had run a like an eighth inch drill bit into this hole at one time because it was a lot deeper than I thought. I am eliminated some of the footage, but I wound up going much deeper than I thought I was going to have to go. And that posed a problem. You can see how deep that's like half an inch I had to plunge in there. So now I'm thinking I've got to get my live center deep into there to uh, have it engaged properly. So I used my largest live center drill. And this is like a 60 degree drill. Goes in uh, all the way. I have to I have to feed it in as far as it'll go to get a taper on the outer rim of that pilot hole. But I did get a taper, thank goodness. It'll be revealed, I believe, on this last plunge. I've got to work on my tail stock. I, you'll see it bounces a little bit. When you first engage, there's a little bit of play in that old tail stock. It's a 1941 model lathe and that's some wear. So I blew the chips out. I'm just going to check and see if the live center will go in there without bottoming out. That looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and load that in the tail stock and slide it forward and support this Dura bar and see if we can get a better finish. I love that diamond tool and it's, it's my go-to. It's an eccentric engineering diamond tool. That's who supplies it. I believe he's out of Australia. Eccentric engineering. He's got some great products. You can check out his website. So I'm going to give it another try. I'm still running at 500 RPMs. Which is as fast as my lathe will spin. That's why I have to use high-speed steel for my tooling. I can't uh, really utilize carbide tool, tooling very well. I can't get enough RPM out of my lathe to make it effective. So I'm running this in two times normal speed just to speed it up for you a little bit. I guess you're seeing it at a thousand RPMs then. Still don't like that finish. It's acceptable but it's coarse. So slowed the lathe down and tried it with a slower one slower speed on the transmission and you're going to see this might help just a little bit but it didn't give me a a pretty finish like i wanted it's my understanding that cast iron typically doesn't give you a, 
a good finish no matter how hard you try but it, i've got so much stock to take off that i just wanted to keep trying get the best finish possible so i went to this rounded blunt nose tool this is a large piece of tooling acts like a heat sink and you get i'm getting some really pretty chips out of it you can see the nice radius on that nose you can use it for a forming tool and uh, i just love this tool i think it's it's a pretty piece of tooling and it's given me as good a finish as i'm going to get in cast iron very acceptable and uh, the rings are only an eighth of an inch wide so i can polish this a little bit with some memory cloth in the lathe and i'll have a nice finish and by the way if you if you use sandpaper on in, on your lathe uh, please cover up your ways that grit that is spun off of the sandpaper can really cause some wear on your lathe ways so i lay a board down when i'm using sandpaper on the lathe and fully protect the ways just getting a rough measurement here, checking for taper, seeing how much material I need to take off. I need to take off about another quarter of an inch of material, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Suffice it to say, we ran that blunt nose tool back and forth until it was this diameter here, which is 1 and 3 eighths, 1.250, or 1.275. Let me get that right. And here I'm boring out just or just as much of the center as i can with drill bits this is a half inch bit here and then i had to switch to the boring bar and this is a amazon supplied boring bar you can get them in kits of 12. i've got three of my allen screws cinched down on this boring bar trying to eliminate the harmonic vibration i was getting so two of those allen screws and the tool holder are, are down tight on that polished part of the shank and then i've got the third allen screw which is nearest to the stock down just touching the bar and eliminating the harmonic vibration i've also got this piece of tape on the shank that has two marks one is the uh, hey wake up mark and the other one is you're fixing to hit the bottom of the hole mark so on the first mark i disengage the automatic feed and then i just hand feed it that last eighth of an inch or so and here we are coming down to the final dimension of the interior of this piece of stock and that's really pretty i'm very happy with the way that turned out and at this point i'm checking to see if i'm still on dimension and you'll see we were dead nuts on dimension still and that was an exciting moment for me I wasn't sure if this stock was gonna uh, change its dimension as i bored it but I'd let it cool overnight, by the way, before I took that last dimension, just to make sure it was at room temperature. And so here I've got a stop set up on my carriage. It's clamped to the ways. That's one I made myself as a shop project. And I'm using a feeler gauge to get the parting blade flush with the end of the stock, zeroed out my uh, dial indicator, and I'm gonna move over an eighth of an inch. And that's 0.125. And then I had further thoughts that I don't want this ring to be tight in the groove. So I backed off about three thousandths and made it 1 point, 0.122. And this took a couple of minutes to part this off, maybe 60 seconds. And I'm not showing you the whole uh, process, just the last few seconds but parted it off and had a piece of stock in my tail stock to catch the ring. Had a little bit of a burr on there. It popped right off and I ran the ring across some 400 grit on a surface plate. Uh, just a little temporary surface plate. I have a piece of, of uh, tile that I use, granite tile that I use for a surface plate for sanding. So next week we'll crack these rings and we'll heat treat them with the proper spring tension. Look forward to that. Wish I'd had time to do it this week, but uh, we'll see you back next week. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.